Knock, knock, pink ponies, bitch! Come on! Hey, everybody. Another Derp Squad debrief podcast here. This week we have a special guest. Hey. And another guy from the channel. Everybody introduce mm. yourselves going left or right. James? I'm James. <laughs> yeah. That's all you need to know about James, I guess? Exactly. Lewis. I'm Lewis and I like crisps. Nah. And camouflage. You cannot see him from the neck to about his wrists. And then you can see his knees. All right, Mitchell, who are you? All right, I am uh, Mitchell, also known as Mr. Outcast, number 44 on YouTube, and I'm a ghost, apparently, according to my webcam. Fuck him up. Oh, God, no. So, what topic do you guys want to start with? Um, let's see, let me pull the topic list up. I don't know, but I'm going to listen to some asking, like, asking Alexandria while, I, while we do this. Uh, me. All right. First up is prank calls. Are they okay, are they okay to do? And if if not, then why not? I All right then. I can I tell you, man, that this list at like three in the morning. I did, <laughs> but I had some assistance. All right. All right. Well, the whole thing about prank calls, when you think about it. They're okay to do, as long as they don't go too far. I mean... As long as they don't hurt anybody. Yeah, I mean, there's points. There's definitely points in a prank call that goes too far. Mm. To the, I'm trying to remember. Oh. Um, can we share stories about prank calls, Luke? Awesome. I don't care. Okay, cool. Uh, back when I was about 14, me and my friends were calling up one of our classmates from school, and uh, what happened was... We prank called him so much, he actually ended up almost calling the police on us. And the best thing was, we were faking who we were, so he's about to call the police oh. on someone. That wasn't <laughs> us. <laughs> was that is pretty badass. So I remember, I think this was a year or two ago, Lewis. Um, we prank called my local Walmart, and I told them that I lost a bet and needed enough uh, hair... Like, shaving cream, you know that kind of stuff you put on an area and it, you know, makes the hairs go away? Um, it's like a cream that you apply and then it makes your hair go away. I don't think that's how it works. I think you put the cream on, then you get a shaver and it no, doesn't no. give you as much irritation. Uh, there's, there's a cream that does that. It's, I don't know what it's called, but I know it's out there. Right. Anyway. I told them I needed enough of that to slather my entire body in it so I could get all the hair off my body because I lost a bet. And I got a very unfortunate old woman that had to search the body uh, uh. The, the body and bath area for, you know. <laughs> right. When you said body, I was thinking something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking as well. Oh my god. All right. Does anybody else? Is that oh, it? sorry. Is that it for prank calls? No, yeah. I, I I'd like to say some shit. Oh, okay. Um, remember back in the days when we used to do loads of prank calls? I think we literally like, spent a whole week doing prank calls. I time. I spent something like fifty pounds within that week on just calling people. Yeah. <laughs> That's back when you and, spent uh, like a hundred pounds every month or something. Yeah, I used to be able to do that, but then. My grandma retired and suddenly she wasn't earning 120 grand a year, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, do you remember what we did is we, um, we called Walmart and I pretended... At, at this point my voice wasn't broken, to say the least. I sounded like a squirrel. I could actually do a girl's voice pretty well. And I called pretending to be a girl called Candy. So instantly you're thinking white trash. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I think and then, I remember this one. <laughs> yeah, and then we just started... To, we, we asked the guy to search around for, like, vibrators and stuff. And, like, anything we could use as, as makeshift vibrators last oh minute. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my. This poor guy was running around, like, Walmart, trying to find any sort of device that vibrates. 
<laughs> and in the end, I think he brought back like a phone or something. <laughs> I remember that time. Uh, this was before Tyler broke his laptop, and uh, we <laughs> called a local a local Walmart asking for the iVibrate because our uh, sister had stolen it, and then our father had nicked it off her. Yeah. No, no, no. There was a prank call that you went in on actually. Yeah. Once. So what we did is, uh, during we we put on stereo mix, so you know you could hear the sound of the computer. And we found this voice clip. And this was back when we spoke to like David and stuff. And we called a uh, like a pet place, you know, that does grooming and all that stuff. I can't remember the name of it. And um, <laughs> we played the thing on the mic. We got to like the um, out of hours grooming section or something dumb like that. And. Uh, it just played through the back, and all you hear suddenly was, oh, "Hey, baby." <laughs> I know I haven't spoken. Yeah, that was it. I haven't spoken to you in a while, but I want you to meet me in the cabin in the woods where we first met. This time, my penis won't be the only thing with a bow on it. And she went, "You can't say that." <laughs> and then, and then she's like, went, "Wait, I just wait!" Did. Just, I thought, I thought this was Mindy. Is this not Mindy? No. Does Mindy work there? Well, well, I know I'm Mindy. Do you want me to pass that mist on? Yeah, could you please pass that mist on to Mindy? I, I need to meet her in the cabin. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> it was just so funny when it, the clip ended because it was just like silence for about five seconds. She went, you can't say that. <laughs> um, I think I have one more uh, prank uh, story, prank call story. I remember me and my friends were on like kind of a group call, and uh, what we decided to do was call the Mexican border. <laughs> and, um, uh, we got threatened. If we called again, they would uh, send the FBI after us. We were threatened after that. It was amazing. I thought the FBI really. I thought of a real yeah. prank call a couple of months ago. Call like the border and say. I'm sneaking around right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even see me. Can't. My drugs are very effective when applied to the lungs. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember me and my sister tried to prank call somewhere, but it didn't work out very well. Remember we I called... prank called your house once? Oh yeah, my mother answered. <laughs> And then she gave it to my dad, and my dad came in, and he's like, I know you people do prank calls. Is this a prank call? I'm like, no. No, daddy, no. I actually remember once, uh, I don't know, this is, I don't think this classifies as a prank call, but it's something funny I did do. Uh, my friend had just got a caller ID thing, and so I decided to call him, and when I asked for my name, I said Satan. So it looked like Satan had <laughs> called him. That's awesome. <laughs> what is your name? Satan. <laughs> oh, God, James, you got a story? No, I never. I don't have to do with prank calls, so. Alright, next topic then? Mm. Alright, next is movies. Mm. Um, I, uh, my dad actually told me about a movie that they're going to be making soon. Oh, what is it? Today. Um,. So you ever heard of the you ever heard of Lex Luthor? Mm, yeah, I've heard of him. I don't know much about him. Lex Luthor was Superman's enemies. Uh, Superman's uh, like main enemy. Oh, in... he was a super rich guy. Yeah, he was like it, and it, it was like Lex Corporation yeah, or something like he yeah. owned. Uh, and he, he his main goal was killing Batman, but he not Batman, sorry, Superman. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he was in. A lot of the Batman comics. So apparently, in the new Superman movie, you're gonna see um, like a Wayne Enterprises satellite, and then it's gonna go down somewhere, and you'll see um, like a Lex Luthor Corporation van. And then eventually, after they've kind of like what put the idea in and stuff like that, and people start talking about it, they're gonna make a Superman and Batman film where they're against Lex Luthor. That sounds awesome. It does. Um, speaking of. The Batman thing itself in Batman and films. What is your guys' view on Ben Affleck portraying Batman? If you... I don't know. I don't know much about Ben Affleck, um, but from what I understand, everybody says he would be terrible for for the role. And but then again, they... but everyone's wanting like the. Uh, I, I I just don't think he could portray a serious Batman. Like you know, the the newest the new the newest Batman movies have all been you know the serious where is she type of you know 
type of thing. You can't really imagine Ben Affleck being able to pull that off like um, Christian yeah. Bale did. You can't do a Christian Bale Batman. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Um. Speak more. Speaking of movies, uh, have you guys heard? Uh, actually, let me go ahead and say this. Have you guys seen the film Dumb and Dumber with Jim Carrey? Oh. And uh, no. uh, oh man, that sucks. Uh, I have heard of it though. I don't think I've seen the trailer. Um, they're making a sequel to it, but since you guys don't know, it's yeah. It, it makes me think of the Three Stooges. <laughs> yeah. Um. I'm trying to think. Uh, more recent films and such. I think my uh, my favorite ever Jim Carrey movie was um. It, you know what? It's that good. I can't even remember the name of it. <laughs> really? Um, oh, God, what's it called? Where he's in... He, he thinks his life is just normal, but it's actually, like, everyone's watching him in, like, t on TV and stuff. Oh, I've seen that. Oh, the Truman Show. That. that was it. Yeah, that's the one. The Truman the Show. One. It's the, one of my favorite movies, and especially by yeah, Jim Carrey, because I, I don't really keep, like Jim Carrey very much. Yeah, don't they keep, like, stopping him, like, from finding out, like, um, yeah, the whole place is just he, like a he's set. basically in this giant dome, and it, there's video cameras everywhere, but he doesn't know they're there, and he's lived his whole life thinking that he's living a normal life. It actually turns out that he's just been part of a TV show his whole life, and everything that's happened to him is meant to happen, because it's set it up so like his dad supposedly died at sea, you know, that type of thing. Oh, and then he tries, to, around him he, try, he tries to go one day, because he's never been on like vacation around anywhere. And he goes, tell you what, let's go. Because uh, there's this girl who moved to Fiji, who, which actually told him that, like, everything was scripted. You know, like, that's... Because she tried out for the show outside of his world, and then came in and told him. Um, but obviously he didn't believe it. She, he just thought she was insane. And she, she said that she had to go to move to Fiji, is, like, how they covered the idea of it. Uh, and... He, like the whole time he's just going through that, he's just wanting. He tries to go. I think he tries to go to Fiji, and what happens is there's a there's a power plant meltdown, and he can't get past. Oh my God. Or something dumb like that, and then um, like uh, this police officer says, "No problem, Truman." He's like, "Wait, how does he know my name?" And he realizes, and he goes like into the woods, and there's all these guys with like has uh, hazmat suits like chasing after him and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm trying to remember what I was going to... Oh, yeah, uh, has anyone here seen American Psycho? No. Ah, dang it, it's a good Christian Bale movie. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain I don't really see much with Christian Bale in it, though. Really? Yeah. Well, honestly, I think it's one of his best roles. Um, it's probably one of the best movies I've seen in a while, because, uh, the movie's about this guy who is, um, I'm trying to think of a word here, antisocial, uh, personality disorder with schizophrenia. And right. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, and um, what's great about it is he's living in this kind of delusional world where he's basically a uh, he, basically he's a businessman, and in right. his head, you know, everything he does, everyone should do. If they don't, he just kills them. <laughs> That's just what it is. And the movie it's, is hilarious. Wow. It, that it's sounds a, pretty cool. It is. It's a satire of higher living and horror movies in a way. All right. I want to see in, World War Z. Oh, okay. uh, that's actually, I need to have a look at that, but it doesn't look great. I can't imagine Brad Pitt being able to pull off a, you know, anything in a zombie film. From what I understand, Bra he lives Brad in. He's. He was a scientist, and then he wasn't a scientist. But then the government was like, "Yeah, we need a scientist like you." And then he's like, "Yeah, uh, no, we're, we're I." I I need to keep my family safe. If my family can't come, then no. No, it's definitely, you know, not doing it. And they said, all right, yeah, sure. So he's, you know, doing his scientist thing. And they're like, all right, now we need you to go out and do your scientist thing and stuff. And he said, uh, okay, uh, no, I'm, I'm just going to chill here. And, you know, they're like, all right, yeah, uh, well, you're... Your family's not essential anymore, by the way, so uh, we're going to have to kick him out. Okay, I'll do what you want. <laughs> oh, wow. So that's all I understand of the movie. That's what I've been told. Well, I'll watch it, and I'll, uh, I'll get a conclusion for next week. Wait, guys, um, speaking of all this, like, um, zombie stuff, have you ever seen the um, Outpost films? No, you, we I... were talking about them when I came to your house, so... I've yeah. heard of those films. It's basically just like a... a like a film like about um, Nazi super soldiers, 
being controlled by a machine. Sounds like that comedy one. I keep I forget what it's called. It's like uh something about winter and like all the fucking zombie oh. Nazi zombies. <laughs> oh my God. Dead snow. 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 <laughs> that thing's hilarious. I watched that movie. I was like, he's great. I had seen it on YouTube a couple of years before. Like I'd seen the trailer for it. I was yeah. Like, I've got to watch the movie. Then my mother got Netflix, and I was like, I wonder if they got Dead Snow on here. Like six months after she had gotten it, and I watched it, and I was like. This is a great movie. This guy just chopped his arm off and then, like, used the stub somehow to kill a zombie. That's awesome. No. Oh, do you, oh, do you remember when um, the uh, after he cut his arm off, the zombie comes out of the snow and um, grabs his um, private part? Yeah, he fights him. He's like, ah, like, oh, oh. like, smack the zombie in the head a few times and kill it. Yeah, then he, he looked down. Screamed. Then he looked down and he's like, and then he looks up at his friend and he's like, no, no. I wonder, does anybody remember in that film, uh, that one scene where that dude's using the bathroom and that chick comes out into the porta potty that he was in <laughs> and basically, like, start giving him a blowjob on that? <laughs> but what was nasty, what was nasty is the fact that he had wiped, you know, um, you know, he had wiped and she had taken his hand and started sucking on his finger right Ooh, after that. It was uh, the nastiest thing I, I have see ever that. seen. Yeah, but then after that, she gets pulled down into the toilet by a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> Best way ever. You're like, you hook up with a girl, get her to take a date, no commitment, just just yeah. give it to the zombies. <laughs> yeah. The zombies. Alright, um, so is that, is that all the movies we've seen, guys? Any more uh, movies? I don't have any more. New Spider-Man movie, that's in production. Um, well, that kind of like, uh... You know, I saw the Amazing Spider-Man. I thought it was good, but uh, I I I thought it was good, but nobody else really does. I haven't the, seen it. the problem is nobody's satisfied with the Spider-Man films. I mean, Sam Raimi when he took his take on it, it was terrible. Uh, the new guy who made it, Mark Webb, does a pretty good job, but honestly, Mark Webb. <laughs> yeah, Mark Webb's his name. <laughs> That's perfect. Um. But he uh, went about it in maybe the wrong way. Spider-Man doesn't really seem like Spider-Man. He kind of seems like... Uh, no, he seems like a teenager, doesn't he? Like, yeah. It, the idea was that he was a teenager at the time, and then he kind of grows up. Yeah. And then he... Uh, within the space of the first movie, like, you know, with the original. Yeah, I mean, in the comic books, it was that way. I mean, Peter Parker's character was very mature for his age. I mean, he was yeah. geeky, and he was antisocial. Well, kind of cast out. And that film, it makes him seem like he's too much of a hip teenager. I mean, he yeah. does parkour, he skates. Like, he, yeah, he does all that stuff, and, like, he's kind of... Yeah, he's still portrayed as, like, a, thing, a person that nobody likes, yet they should like him. There's no reason. Yeah. You know. And I think the director got it mixed up with the fact of Peter's character being geeky and smart. In that film, Peter is smart. I mean, he's an intelligent character, but he's not a geek. No. Well, no, he's not a... Hey, the thing is, Peter Parker was always smart, but you could tell that he was a very... He wasn't just smart or a nerdy. Like, he was a geeky person. Yeah. Like, in general, the, the things that he liked was, were very geeky. Yeah, and they didn't yeah. nail that in the film. Uh, on, no. Also, it seems like... As far as the Amazing Spider-Man goes, it seems like uh, the villain for that movie was way too much like the Green Goblin, even though it was the Lizard. Which is yeah. really strange. I didn't really like the lizard. Um, I remember, I remember they did a um, an animated series a long, long time ago when I was a little kid that I used to watch. We used to have it on like you know the old V, v the is it VHS tapes? I think that's what they were yeah. called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he was in that, and I remember I used to love it. That that Spider Man was voiced by um, Neil Patrick Harris in that as well. Which oh, that's pretty awesome. awesome. I liked the. Um, but the the thing is, the, I think what the problem was with the the Amazing Spider-Man was, it, I thought like it was really good and it was really well made, but you were kind of just watching what you'd already watched years ago. Yeah, you know? it, it was. It didn't bring really nothing new to the table, and what it did bring to the table didn't fit the character. It just kind of made it odd. And I, I'm feeling a bit sketchy about this new one because. Um, do you remember, I think it was Spider-Man 3, where they had something like three villains all going around at the same time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it was just a clusterfuck, and it kind of ruined it. This yeah. time, it's Electro and Rhino. Well, 
if they can pull it off right, I mean, multiple villains in a film doesn't really make it a clusterfuck. I mean, like, let's say Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. True. It pulled off multiple villains perfectly. It did. But, but th- that, that's a completely different genre, really. Like, you yeah. can't compare Scott Pilgrim with Spider-Man because it's not <coughs> the same idea remotely. True, true. Um, hopefully it won't be a clusterfuck. Also, speaking of the new film itself, I don't like the redesign of the new costume. I thought the design from the no. first Amazing Spider-Man was really cool. It was original. Now they seem to be moving back into Raimi territory with the original yeah. films. And that's not a good sign. <clears throat> I guess we'll see what it's like when it comes out. Yep. All right, next topic. James, yep, do you sure. have anything for the subject? Nope. All right. <laughs> uh, marry one, make love to one, and kill one. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Stapler. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a stapler, a rubber band ball. And a <laughs> and a window. <laughs> However, it's possible I would probably make love to the window. <laughs> I feel like a rubber band. Yeah, I ball think I'd be very burny. Love friction. Um, if it was to go for it, I would kill a stapler. <laughs> I would um, I guess bury the rubber band and um, kill not kill uh, and no, and just just pretend that you're like infertile or something, and then never have sex. Yeah, <laughs> and then the window. I would uh, I just <laughs> try to screw the window. <laughs> you know, you know how creepy that would be. You like making love to a window. Someone just walks by just like, and just, just looks like your, over. Your neighbors like across across from you and just looking at you and going, "What the?" <laughs> <laughs> like all the kids come out and just like sit, maybe sit down, and get a bit of popcorn. <laughs> oh God. These kids are very screwed up. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd marry the rubber band ball. Uh, after the stapler incident, I think I'd be a better lover. <laughs> so, so I'd, I'd, as long uh, as you don't have to like, window. as long as you don't have to like <laughs> staple the end of your knob, I think you'd be all right with the staple. Oh god! I mean, there's like three different ways you could do it, but you could get you could get it caught in the spring. Luke, I just imagine you killing the window, just taking a chair, it's like, fuck you, and just like throwing it <laughs> through the window. I've done it. I've done it. Um, apparently when I was three, four, five, six, seven, something like that, uh, it was between the age of three and seven, and I threw something at one of the windows in my old house and completely busted it out, and my parents didn't have the money to fix it, so it kind of just sat that way for years. <laughs> till we I... moved out. I feel like your parents had the money. They're just like, yeah, we didn't need that window anyway. It's <laughs> gonna break another one. Let's, let's yeah. prepare the more important ones. Luke, I would never let you in my house because you just like walk around punching windows out. No, nah, I don't do that anymore. Actually, uh, the one that did that was one of the recent foster children. He uh, he beat all of the windows loose, and the ones he didn't beat loose, he broke. Wow. That's he was amazing. Four. He was. You've got to be. You he was have... four. <laughs> You gotta be a pretty decent four-year-old. Like that, that, that guy must have lifted like, he was like buff four-year-old tons. <laughs> it, it was Gage. It was Gage. He was Gabe. Just, he was. I can't say his last name, but he would slam his weight. Basically, he would get momentum and slam his arms <laughs> to where it would hit the window, vibrate the window, and then by the time the window had vibrated almost to where it would break, he would hit it again. And then he eventually got it to the point where he hit it hard enough that it busted out completely. Wow. Yeah. That uh, must be an interesting sight to watch a four-year-old run into a window and then go through it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he didn't go through it. He didn't go through it. He just smacked bust. it with his arms until he would, like, back up. And I'm just imagining a four-year-old going like this to a window right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right, next time. Actually, wait, James. James. I almost what? forgot. What? Mary Love Kill. What do you pick? Stapler kill. window rubber band ball. Cool. Um, kill the window. <laughs> obviously, what? because if you make love to it, it wants if it breaks. Oh. It's Why are you worried about the, whether the window breaks instead of the... The, what's left of your cock at the end of it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but it's got to break in the first place. 
Just don't thrust so hard, man. <laughs> We're take humans, your time. not horses. <laughs> <laughs> you guys take one horse. Just try. Eh. I love how James is like so buzzed about the fact that oh no, I'll break the window. <laughs> Just Can't be make love to Just it now. This, 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 isn't, this isn't like rape. <laughs> <laughs> this is gentle. <laughs> this is gentle. It's passionate, man. It's passionate. <laughs> All right, next topic. Next topic. Mentalist. Uh, stink forever or lose your hands. So basically, you're gonna smell like dead fish forever, or <laughs> you get your hands chopped off. Um. I think I would rather stink forever for that forever. God, I can't speak English, but uh, because you know, losing your hands is a horrifying thing. I mean, like I do everything with my hands, so you'd have to that right masturbate with your feet. <laughs> we just try <laughs> to do this here. Yep. <laughs> right, boys. Training begins today. <laughs> but uh, the whole thing about stinking. I mean, like. Even if you, like, stink forever, there's probably ways you can, you know, like, cover it up to some no, no, extent. It smells like dead fish, dude. Dead oh. Fish. <laughs> and the thing is, you would become smell. immune to it, Av. You, you'd be, if you lived on your own, like, you'd become immune to it at, oh, at yeah. some point. But uh, imagine it this way, Lewis. Your girlfriend wouldn't want to smell you forever. And you can't cover yeah. it up. I mean, the smell of dead fish, dozens of dead fish, would be... You know, there is a way to uh, keep them from smelling you. Just get, like, you know, one of those uh, clips and just click your nose. Nobody's going to do that around you forever. <laughs> you never know. Gas mask, man. Just wear a gas oh, mask. Yeah, yeah. Some melon plant. I've got a spare one right next to me. Just, no, we, you'd, we, you'd become an entrepreneur. And what you would do is you'd get these little things that you can just put on the inside of your nose. And what it does is just, like, you could get cherry smell. And then you could just, like, stand you for once. So basically, like, create filters for people's noses just to make sure they don't smell you. <laughs> Stink forever, obviously. All right. Um, I don't know. They're coming out with robotic um, implants. I don't want to say implants, but it, it's kind of like prosthetics. That's it. Uh, robotic prosthetics that basically sense uh, electrical signals on your skin where the nub is or the nerve endings and uh, try to replicate what you're trying to do with your normal limb. They've been existent for a long time. Yeah, but they're only recently coming out with them for commercial, you know, selling them. Oh, yeah, right. Mass produced, really. Mass produced, yeah. Yeah, because it would um, cost you like, millions before, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. It would. I believe the cost of the uh, original ones was, I'm wanting to say like, 10,000 or more because it came with like a battery that lasted you for uh, hours and hours and it was programmed but it wasn't programmed properly and they just had so much research and development time but yeah uh, I might lose my hands and grab one of those well here's the problem with those I mean like one day you probably get a faulty one one day you're just going to be masturbating and go haywire and then <laughs> you don't want your dick dog. anymore <laughs> <laughs> practice on a hot dog <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next topic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, favorite gun. So you can get any gun you want on Earth for free. Keep in mind this is a uh, a rifle or a pistol or a shotgun. Uh, you've got one of those three types. It's like an assault rifle. You know, any sort of rifle, any sort of shotgun. Doesn't matter. Can I have a bolt rifle? No. <laughs> Uh, something that's invented already. Okay. Every <laughs> This is a this is a pistol. You know, it could be a fully automatic M1911 with a suppressor thread, or with suppressor threads already on it. Um, with the raised sights for it. I have an M14. Just an M14. M14. Any attachments? Yep. Um, probably no, no attachments. Okay. Um, I would want one of the original Tommy guns, not the ones they developed in the army, where it's like, you know, use the box or the kind of rectangle clips. I want one that was like the gangsters kind of used back in the day, the mock. <laughs> After the show, I'll, I'll talk to you about a, a gun shop in town that has some. Cool. A PP2000. 
PP two thousands look a bit like the ones that mobsters used to use. Like you know the stereotypical ones. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like like how it was represented in that uh, movie where like kids put it as um mobsters and they had like pie guns, those type of looking ones. Can't remember what that that movie's called, but there you go. What about you, Luke? What gun do you want to own? Well, I would take an M14 with uh, an extended rail system that goes from the mag to two inches before the muzzle brake and uh, put a grip, a bipod, a flashlight, and an eight times scope, and then off to the side. Because M14s have rails on either side, and then they have them on the top if you get the EBR. So, uh, get the M14 EBR stock, and then put your angled sights, because in Battlefield 4, you have your gun like this, and you can turn it like this and use iron sights. So. Sounds pretty cool. I'd get one of those, or another Mosin Nagant, um, with a like a 50 caliber version of a Mosin Nagant. If I get my gas mask and like all this army gear that I'm getting, cut. Um, can you imagine me just laying down in a field with an AS50? That'd be pretty sexy. That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. All right. All right next uh, topic. Yeah. Oh wait, did you choose a gun, Mitch? Oh, I did. I uh, Tommy gun. Dude. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot. All right. Uh, you can be any object, but you stay that way for six months. It may or may not take off your life. The average life, I believe, is like twenty-eight thousand something days. So by that, it may or may not uh, continue to aid you as you are this object. So you could be a webcam. You could be. <laughs> you could be uh, a coffee cup, uh, a firearm, a bullet, a tank, anything. You could be any could object. I, could I or become? Could I become? I know what I would become. I'd become my girlfriend. Uh, I'd become no, not my girlfriend's webcam. I I I install a camera in my girlfriend's bedroom, right? And then what I do is I would become that camera. Oh my god! I would become a uh, a small quadcopter um, with a camera, like a, a small UAV drone with a camera. I can just fly into anybody's bedroom, land on their dresser, and then boom. I'm trying to think what I would become. <clears throat> I'd become a chair. I'd become a tampon. You, could, you would get more tail than, uh, <laughs> what's that guy's name? Peter something. Peter Griffin, that would be odd. No, no, oh. no, no. Glenn Quagmire. North. North. you get more tail than North. I think I would become a, a dice, a 20-sided dice. Because I, I collect dice, so it'd be pretty cool just to be a dice <laughs> or die. Your collection. To be yeah, just to chill with my friends, to chill with my collection. Just they're all just sat there playing Dungeons & Dragons, and it's like, alright, you ready to be thrown? And you're like, yeah, and they just like lob you against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> alright, so next topic. Wait, James didn't pick an object. Oh wait, yeah, chair. Yeah, that was a chair. I have a terrible memory. Uh, you can have one fictional item. What do you choose? Hmm. I would have to say. Uh, has anyone here played uh, Singularity? No. Anyone? Oh, okay. Uh, the game is basically. Uh, Your camera froze in the weirdest position just <laughs> now. Great. Just, that's just great. Um, you look like you're going, yay! <laughs> yes! Um, I think if uh, I could choose an item. Uh, in the Singularity, that game, you get this device called the Singularity. Um, or is it the end? I can't remember what it's called. Uh, basically, what it does, uh, I'm trying to remember, it allows you to kind of destroy items and then rebuild them by oh, just using the device. Yes, yeah, basically. So it sounds like the uh, rebuilding mechanic in Red Faction Gorilla. Yeah, it kind of is, but uh, it, except for being a gun, it's like just a device on the hand. I think yeah. I would want that because I just it can, you can also age people too. You can age them to dust. And what I would wow. do is just like have that and just like destroy and rebuild things at will. Anyone piss me off? Just bam, gone. Be amazing. If you miss them, rebuild them. Yeah, just bring it back. Keep everybody in jars. 
Oh my god. <laughs> I'll just have them labeled, have like a little shack just full of people's ashes. Sounds like when I had Dexter the Bear mod. <laughs> Dude, First Sims 3. See... I, I would like bring people into the basement and then I'd just like kill them without anybody <laughs> seeing. Oh, <God>. <laughs> Mitch. <laughs> Dude, your camera turned off for a second and after you finished that last sentence you said, it it showed the gif of, yeah, science! That <laughs> 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 was so perfect. <laughs> Alright, James. What would, you, what would you get? One fictional item. Um, um, I actually have no idea. Um, I have no clue what I would have. <laughs> You're so helpful. No clue. Alright, Lewis, did you pick anything yet? Yeah, girlfriend, camera. No, no, no. no Fictional no. item. Fictional item? Oh. Um... I would become. I'd become no, a no, fucking no. like gal no, a galactic spacecraft. You get Wait, what? A, you get, get a fictional I get. item. Yeah. You, oh, damn. You can own a fictional item. Like, let's say, uh, War Thunder. You can have that Yak 9T, or uh, whatever it is, in your backyard or something. You could have uh, a stormtrooper blaster and not hit shit. <laughs> See what I did there? Anybody? Anybody? I do. I do. A what? Stormtrooper blaster from Star Wars. Oh yeah, okay. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! I would have a pulse rifle off of off alien. All right. So you would annoy your neighbors with the sound. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Just go out and fire in the air. Ah! <laughs> <gasps> I would be caught. I I would get that gun that was in um. Destroy all humans, the one where you'd fire at them and then they'd be oh. crazy and then the head would explode. <laughs> oh, oh, that game is beautiful. Alright, one fictional item. You know, I would I would choose that uh, Chinese concept prototype tank. It had two, like, 200 something millimeter guns, four tracks, it had, like, six inches of armor. I would have that. That's a fictional item that nobody's wow. been able to make. Because nobody can find an engine big enough to drive it. Nobody can find steel hard enough to shoot this this massive 200 millimeter can cannon. Nobody can find out how to get enough suspension and support all of the weight of uh, what estimated, I believe, is like 200 tons of vehicle. And the thing is like the size of a house. God, I can imagine Luke driving around just blowing the shit out of things. Be like, yeah, <laughs> be amazing. America. I would, drive, I would drive literally, uh, Mitch. You know where the police station is in my town, right? Yes, yes. I would drive downtown, park at the movie theater. And when they came and gave me a ticket, I would pull it off, climb up the barrel, shove it down the barrel, and then blast it into the sky. No, no. no, no the funny thing is, what cops gonna have the balls to walk up to your tank and be like, "Get a ticket on this." How would you get a boot on that thing anyway? I don't know. Seriously, two hundred tons of vehicles just gonna crush that and the pavement under it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next topic. Uh, you have to fight the Pakistani army. What weapon do you take? Now, Ew. you could make this easy and say, I'll take a minigun, or I'll take that tank Toby was talking about, or I'll take... Uh, it's an artillery I'll, gun count. I'll take a, a knife with a bipod or something. <laughs> it's an artillery gun count. Uh, you, you can, you can take that. No, I'm taking that then. But keep in mind, these, these guys have AK-47s and an artillery gun doesn't have a lot of armor. Or anything to protect care. you. I would say I would take a, uh, Claymore sword, and I'd just start running through them, just like cutting them to bits. Using pure skill, not advanced weaponry, just pure skill. Alright. Lewis? Understandable. MT49 with a shit ton of attachments, including like, a knife with bipod. It's kind of like a crate <laughs> just falls and hits the ground in front of you, and you're like, "Oh, that's my shipment!" And then you open one side of it. You know, like there's, there's all these, there's all these like British soldiers, like <laughs> there's all these like British soldiers going, "We don't have enough firepower." And it's like, "Don't worry, I'm Scorpio. I'm gonna call this shit in." It's like a crate just goes boom. <laughs> I can right. take out this MT49 with every attachment on demand. So they've 
Let's see, this is a Pakistani army. They've got guns and stuff, so... <laughs> no! <laughs> I, I really don't know. I'd say... I would say, like, a Sherman from World War II, just to give him a chance. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Because that thing doesn't have any Lexan on it or anything. Uh, Lexan's a form of bullet resistant glass. But um, the Sherman just has open portholes. So if they shoot enough at that porthole, eventually they're going to hit me. And I'm only one person, so I can't drive and shoot at the same time. Mm. Um, unless you got Batman's car. Unless I got Batman's car. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Does an enlarged portal gun count? Uh, yeah, but I don't know how you're gonna kill him with. Oh, hit the moon! Oh wow! Ground right in front of the army. All right, I get it. I get it. Nice. Or hit Mitch's face because it looks like the moon right yes. now. Yes. <laughs> Full moon. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it looks like you're puking out Pakistani army people. Okay. I just like to point out that Mitch's brother is behind him, topless. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why. Get a shirt on. <laughs> I think I would take a minigun because it's the Pakistani army. They're, they've got like. Just mow them down. They've got Mosin <laughs> Nagants, they've got AK 47s, AK 74Us, AK 74s, AK, you know. They've got M4s, M16s. Any, any gun you can find and pick off of a dead guy, they've got it. Wait, 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 I got the ultra weapon that could just end uh, the Pakistani army. Uh, just use a nuclear bomb. Screw it, just... Pakistani nuclear winner, then you die. Well, just no, no, it, it, it's one nuke smaller. One will not actually cause nuclear winter. Oh, wow. Yeah. Use a smaller bomb and just you know, oh, wipe it out. Is yeah. that your brother sipping coke behind you? Uh, <clears throat> he's not uh, sipping, he's snorting coke. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. It's not you, it's not you Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> you sprinkled coke off on your face. Oh God. No, this no wonder it's so different. white. No wonder it's so white. That is like the purest grade of coke I've ever seen. <laughs> you got well a white working fee. Okay. Uh, <laughs> next topic then. Yeah, sure. Uh, you'll be stuck in a room for a year. You can take five movies and two games. What do you take? So I'm going to go left to right on this one. James, five Not movies and two games. You're going to be stuck in a year. You're going to be stuck in a room for a year. You have to... You can only watch these five movies and play these two games. Okay. I'd probably take... Um, For the games, I'd probably take Skyrim. Now, you guys don't know much of Skyrim. Um... And Daisy, Daisy, um, mm -hmm. and then for the movies, just probably, I'll probably just take any random movie that I find in my area because I can't, I don't really watch movies. So you can take five of these, by the way. So I, I yeah, just I just pick a random movies. any five. I, I I just pick up any like five that I. For the games oh, I would take would be, I I would also take Scrim, uh, and I would take Star Wars Battlefront too. I would start. Oh wait, oh wait, I'm already I'm on the far right, so it's Mitchell's turn. Um, oh. And then for for movies, I'd probably take um, Fight Club. Uh, I don't know. I, I I like a lot of movies, and picking five would probably kill me. You can include so. box sets in this. I forgot. Scrubs, Scrubs the box set. Does the box set count as one movie then? Yeah, it would count as uh, one or two. I don't TV know. I shows. Guess depending on uh, how big the box set is, it too. Well, Scrubs, the, uh, the Scrubs set TV like set is something like 200 hours, so. Uh, that would count as two. It <laughs> 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 counts as two of your movies. <laughs> the thing is, you'd get, you'd finish it, and then you, you like, you know, you'd be bored. Like, like you, you, you won't be bored by the time you're going back to the beginning because it's been so long since you last well, saw it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mitchell. Okay. Um. Oh, this is kind of a hard one. Uh, for games, I would probably take Fallout Three and then uh, Fallout Three and Crash Bandicoot Two. Um. For I'm movies, it is an amazing game. 
Um, for movies, I think A Clockwork Orange. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, the Lord of the Rings movies. Which I, I, does that count as three or does that count as one? Because you know. How many hours? Uh, it's probably like count as three. So, yeah, the, that's all I'm gonna take for uh, those movies. Um. I would take Gary's mod since you've got, so, assuming you've got internet and the ability to play online and the ability to update your game and get, you know, workshop content or add-ons or mods, then I would take Gary's mod and Daisy. Because yeah, when I get irritated at Daisy, I can play TTT and randomly kill people and feel good. Yep. What about films? Uh. Films. I'd take the Band of Brothers box set. Um, there's not a lot of movies I like, but if I could count my other four movies as watching just the the videos that you guys make while I'm gone, that'd be cool. But assuming I can't do that, then just pick four random movies. Like, go to my mother, ask her about four random movies, and then whatever she says, I'll take those. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask a question here, Luke. <clears throat> in this room that we're locked in, are we being fed? Are we just being locked in here till we die? No, you're stuck in there for a year, so you can't survive a year without food and water or going to the bathroom. So uh, in this room, there's a toilet. It's kind of like a jail cell. You've got everything you need, except the food aspect, but still. Um, you've got food and water and a toilet, so All right. you're good to go. I, I don't know. Think. I don't want to be in a blank room, just like with nothing. Yeah. He's sitting there. Okay, imagine like a uh, a cabin, and then you've got your master bedroom, your you know toilet, just the bare essentials in that in that cabin. Except right. this cabin is one room, like okay. like a, a very rough uh, a roughing it sort of cabin that would have indoor plumbing. All right, cool. I understand now. All right, next topic, and while you guys are doing this topic, I gotta take care of something real quick uh you have one million dollars what do you buy hmm. <laughs> well the simple answer is whatever the fuck i feel like buying yeah <laughs> exactly same yeah. like that when, when it comes to that money yeah you could pick out things but you'd be here for forever in a day like i would just go online and just like yeah i want that yep yep, yep, yep. oh got a hot tub got a you, you know got a new house yeah, I mean, if you're going to have a million dollars, you're going to have to kind of, like, spend it wisely and get multiple things out of it rather than just one object. I would actually probably put it in the bank and live off the um, interest. To yeah, honest. see, that would be the smart idea to do. Um, but if we're going down to single items, which is what I think uh, Luke kind of wanted to do, um, there's actually a mech suit, a fully operational mech suit that I would love to buy. It costs mm -hmm. around a million dollars. If I could have that, that'd be awesome. Just walking down the street in a fucking mech suit. <laughs> I have seen a mech that's actually got like, mini guns yeah, attached to it and just, stuff. It's awesome. Just be careful where you're walking, though. Well, <laughs> don't, don't stand on a puppy. <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to like step on children by accident and be like, oh, dang it, just got to wipe that off my shoe there. <laughs> you just like get the robot to go, <laughs> yeah. just, like, just like chip brain off you. I was like, nah, <laughs> nah. The uh, children be like the equivalent. Equivalent. I can't say that word right now. Of stepping in dog shit. <laughs> it's like, man, again, God. Yeah, you can just like anybody's. You've got an arch enemy. It's just like, fuck this. Just go and knock down half the house. Yeah, it's like, well, I mean, what is anybody gonna do? I mean, like, you're in a mech suit for God's sakes. <laughs> hmm. I wonder what else would cost exactly a million dollars. I mean, there's not many things that do cost exactly around that price. Hmm. Uh, I buy the government <laughs> <laughs> for a million dollars. Yeah, so they probably give you more than that in the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the lottery, there's actually a guy uh, where I live who did win the lottery. I think yeah. he won around. Uh, he won around by about uh, seven million dollars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. And you know what he did? You'd guess what he did with, like did with it. Just just guess. One. Uh, I know I'm guessing. Uh, 
Ebon, move, actually. Move, move to like a country where buying women's legal. Nope, he bought a new lawnmower. <laughs> really? Fucking Welcome so to Tennessee. We buy uh, new lawnmowers. I, I was gonna say. I I I literally just said fucking southerners. Like, in in America, you move down. The further you move down the country, the dumber it seems to get. The the the, the further down England you move down, down, it seems to be the smarter they get because you, the richer, the the lower down England you it tends to be the richer you are. Yeah, I mean, well, the whole thing about you know the southern kind of thing in uh, the states is like it's full of these uh, kind of religious extremist fundamentalist people that are just out of their minds. It's really yeah. bad. We're called the Bible Belt for a reason around where I live. Yeah. Um. Well, like, you know the country Sweden. Yes. There is. Fuck all people in their jails. Yeah, I and mean, ninety three around ninety three percent of people are atheists. Though. Yeah, I mean, like, and you know, I remember I saw a picture that made me really happy. People said people around where I live say that oh, if this country became atheistic, it'd go to hell. I always use mm. Sweden as an example, saying no. yeah, I know. Sweden and Denmark. Denmark's yeah, the, the same way. Nicest places in the world as well. Like I know, it's amazing places, and everyone thinks you know when. But, I mean, for God's sake, the majority of wars in history have been about religion. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of a sad thing, too, because, you know, when I view religion, I don't view all religious people as bad, because a lot of my friends are religious, and they're cool people, but religion itself can be very, if you read the text of it in itself, it can be very full of hatred, and just, I'm trying to think of the word here, I can't think of it, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, Luke, what would you buy? What would I buy? Plane ticket for Lewis, James, and Alex and Jimma. Bring them to America and buy a house, pay for it in full, and then buy guns and ammunition for all of us to have fun for like months on end. You can come too, Mitch. All right, cool. Yay, I'm included. <laughs> <laughs> Thing I'm is, talking. like, I, I I live in Berlin, so it's a bit more difficult. No. <laughs> Pay off a government official, you get a visa for you. Or, not a visa, a green card. And, Is that what uh, it's really called? A green card. It's either a visa or a green card. And I love how um, yeah. my uncle lived in Canada for a while. He went there, got his like visa and everything, uh, and then he was offered to become a full citizen. So he's technically a citizen of Canada now. Like, he can go whenever he wants without any form. He can go and live there whenever he wants without any form of, like, you know, authentication. Uh, oh, wow. And then, a month, uh, about two weeks after he got that, he moved back to Britain. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because that's just how we do. Wow. All right, I take it everybody said what they would spend their money on? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I would invest some of it as well. A very, like, maybe 10000 Yeah, I think we all pretty much came to that agreement that investing some of it is a good idea. How do you face dropping the soap IRL? You're in, a in what way? In, in, in prison. You're in a maximum security prison, and everybody's got life in prison there. Oh, wow. I so, think I would I would deal with it. As soon as I drop the soap, I'd be like, I ain't picking that shit up. Walk away. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't need a, I don't need a shower today. Fuck this. <laughs> this. This question applies along with the million dollar question. You've got a million dollars. What do you spend it on? Before I'm going into this, I'm paying off a guard so that he'll pick up, the, he'll watch as I pick up the soap. That way, nobody will screw with me. I'm paying off like the, three or four guards. Wait, wait, what was if like the guards into it though? He's just like watching. He's like, I'm not helping. I just got free money out of nowhere. And then you're just screwed. That man. would be hilarious. Like you, you got the money. He's just like, right, let me check his mood. And he just gets out his phone, checks his bank statement, right? Uh, and then it, you go, you then down to bend the soap, and then he just points at everyone. He says, "Everyone, <laughs> ah!" And everyone just runs in like, ah! <laughs> Now I'm paying these guys a good like twenty grand a piece over like my sentence. I would do that <laughs> if I was that guy. I would take that damn money and I would just shoot, point at his butt, and then there's all these like <laughs> mental guys that. It shouldn't even be living anymore. Like half of them are on death row for like serious crimes. <laughs> They're all just running over like. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, I'm not paying them up front. I'm paying them, like, as I'm, you know. Yeah, but no money. money could ever, ever replace that moment when you can laugh <laughs> at this guy who's just getting fucked fuck. I, I think I would choose a, over 20 grand just to be able to say, yeah, I'll do that. So this guy's got complete confidence in his asshole. And then just, like, thousands of insane inmates just going... Bugs and just like running in slow motion. Hurry up! Go! Move. Luke has turned into a palm of a hand, so Boom. there's that. Alright. Um, keep in mind, Lewis, for 20 grand, you could keep Gemma happy, and. Over time, you could save up ten, like maybe five, seven, ten thousand dollars, and get a gold-plated uh, 1911 with like diamond-studded sights or something ridiculous. <laughs> I can't see out of this shit. <laughs> with a suppressor and all, which I well, they'd see you coming from a mile away, so I mean, it wouldn't do much for you. But hey, James. Meep. How do you deal with dropping the soap in real life? Don't pick it up. <laughs> See? Me and James had the right that, idea. That conversation went on for so much longer than I thought it should have done. <laughs> I think we should have, should have just gone, pay him off, and they were like, we won't pick it up. Yeah. And then, <laughs> but it just turned into like a half an hour conversation about inmates running in slow motion fucking just, them in the ass. That's, that's prison rape. <laughs> that's what that conversation was. Weirdest thing you've ever done. Hmm. Um, I, I, okay, uh, weirdest thing I've ever done was possibly look into a mirror and try my best to see if the mirror would match up with my movement, like movements. <laughs> uh, I was hoping one day I could just do it one day, and then like my, <laughs> my other image would be like, shit, he got me, he just like run out of the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I think I may have been. I think I may have been like on LSD or something. Someone might have slipped that in my drink. Was this meant to be the stupidest thing? Weirdest Ooh. thing, stupidest thing. Weirdest. Whatever. It's kind of that. What? It's <laughs> when I was little. Uh, I had this thing, and what you do is you put a magnetic pen on it, and what it do is it would draw. But then if you, I think if you like chuck it, it'd go away. Yeah. That, that was the idea. I got angry at it and threw it down the stairs and went, wait, no, and then jumped after it and fell down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I've actually got a dent in my head from it. Somewhere. I can't you, have, where. you have Dame Bramage now. Dame Bramage? <laughs> Dame Bramage, yeah. I actually remember, uh, if we're speaking about stupid things, I remember when I was a kid, I had a BB gun, and I cocked the BB gun, and my stupid kid mind thought, perhaps if I shoot this while the thing's still cocked. <laughs> <laughs> it came back, and it, like, cut my hand open on, like, my knuckles. I was just like, oh, well, shit. <laughs> then I walked in and just, like, bandaged it up. I did that as well, except the, the handle was plastic on mine. Oh, James, I weirdest slash stupidest I, I, I thing. Have, I, have, I haven't done much weird things, but the thing that I can remember is just trying to have a staring competition with a dog. Doesn't go well. That's odd. I know. That's the weirdest thing I've ever done. My last pretty boring. By the way, guys, sorry if there's a one second. I gotta. I'll be right back. Actually. Hello. Hello. Oh, never mind then. Uh, god dang it. Oh my god, phones. I hate fucking phones, man. Phones are terrible. Hook it. Uh, I should. That's what I do. I walk up to things and, uh, and unhook them like a boss, just like, yeah. Yeah. So annoying. <laughs> Boop. Done. Britain so, has a huge problem with uh, call centers ringing you. Like fucking in Indian man ringing you up and going, Hello, my name is Francis, would you like to buy a Sky DVD box? It's like, <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually said, uh, uh, I actually just like literally threw the phone once because it was something like five <laughs> calls within the space of ten minutes of that. And I was just like, fuck this, I'm out. That's amazing. So weirdest slash dumbest thing I've ever done. Um... Weirdest thing I can't say. Uh, <laughs> I literally can't say. YouTube will shut you down. Yeah, they would. They would. 
Uh, I'm thinking like Snapchat right now. <laughs> no, what? I don't. I don't even. Anyway, um, dumbest thing I. I've been through the story a hundred times for the people, but I've never said it here. I jumped two feet off of a boat and hit soft sand on a beach and broke my left leg. <laughs> what? And then, and then what? decided to walk on it. What? Uh, up How the beach, you... And then I sat down like a boss. My brother told me, it's not broken. I said, dude, dude, it's broken. It's broken. I can feel it's broken. And then I, uh, I rode a motorcycle on it and wrecked that motorcycle twice. <laughs> It was a small, it was a small rut, but I was going like 20, and I suddenly stopped, and I forgot, oh wait, balance, <laughs> right over oh my, my left leg, and it wasn't in a cast for like almost two weeks, so I ended up getting it in a cast, and uh, walked on that cast, and just did stupid stuff with it, and uh, yeah. Oh, How did you break a leg by jumping on the sand? <laughs> You know, that's that still puzzles me to this day. It happened like two or three years ago now, oh. and it still puzzles me. Do you? Uh, can you not sleep at night because because you're just laying there like, how did I do that? How did I do that? You're but, just like uh, in the car and the like in feet position. No, no. <sighs> no. The funny thing is, look, when you said that, I envisioned you jumping off a boat, landing face first in the sand, and just like basically like breaking your neck. <laughs> Oh god! Like his, his leg coming over his head, hitting. <laughs> stops signed, it? He just stops for a second and then goes snap. <laughs> <laughs> giving an arm wrestle to someone, and then suddenly your arms go. <laughs> the thing was, I rolled in the sand for a couple of minutes after I did it, rolling in the water, almost drowning, just up the beach, down the beach, up the beach, down the beach, going. Uh, uh. <laughs> I literally did that for like five minutes. Uh, next topic. Next topic. Alright. Uh, most painful thing you ever did. I just described that, so I'm out on this topic. Um, most painful thing I've ever, uh, can we say experience? Because I really didn't do this. This was, uh, caused by someone else. Oh, um, yeah. when I was a kid, I was about five years old. And uh, I was walking outside one day, and my sister was pushing a swing. And uh, be me being a little kid, uh, I walked in front of it. It hit me in the face. It almost broke my jaw. It, it was wow. probably the worst thing I ever felt. Um, I remember before passing out. Uh, I remember seeing flowers. <laughs> before passing out. <laughs> I remember pa I passed out. I remember before that, looking down at flowers and just seeing blood pouring from my mouth and just me collapsing. But what made it the best thing, though, was that uh, my sister ran in the house, told my mom that uh, I got hurt. And my mom's like, oh, probably something little. He's fine. She walks outside. I'm starting to come back to consciousness. I hear this, oh, my fucking God, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> what did you uh, do? <laughs> it was um, great. Or the most painful thing I've had. I've not really done anything too painful in my life, except from like my chronic migraine problem. But um, yeah, um, playing rugby about a year ago, probably, and this kid fell and started stomping on my hand. Rugby boots have um, studs in them, this big full metal, uh, about eight of them stomping on my wrist. I decided to get up and punch him so hard that I broke his nose <laughs> but Ben didn't realize I had a broken hand of which I punched him with. <laughs> so at this point my hand was like mangled like this. Oh <laughs> wow. Well, James? Me. I hadn't really done much things. You, fell down, you, fell up, you tripped over your cat like a month ago and fell down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, surp I'm surprised you haven't had his internal organs squished. <laughs> surprised you didn't. I feel like that's worse <laughs> for the cat, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I think the second most painful experience I've ever had, uh, I'm just going to say this one because it applies to the topic. Uh, I'm actually going to tell two stories, but the second one's really short. The first one's rather short as well. But uh, I, there used to be a gate. Like, You go into my kitchen... Through, you go through the living room, through the dining room, and then you get to the kitchen. 
and mm. then you turn right, and there's the stove and the uh, the hot plate where you put your skillets and stuff and cook. And mm. when you go past that, on your right is the basement uh, doorway. So there's a gate in the doorway, and I was mad, so I go to, you know, step over the gate, and I get my foot caught, and because I'm angry, I just try and pull it on through. But I trip, and my ankle rolls with my right foot, and I fall down like 26 steps and hit the, if the blankets weren't there, I would have hit the concrete ground on my head and probably passed out, but oh my God. had a massive concussion. But uh, I fell down and just skidded along the steps. These steps had nails sticking out of them. These were really old steps. We eventually ripped those steps out and put new steps in, but I landed on blankets, got up, and my mom was like, what happened? I fell down the steps. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. So I went, yeah. and, got, I went and got a pool towel, and then I went to a party. <laughs> and uh, the second one, I was riding my bike, and I was angry because I left my headphones. Uh, I forget where it was. But I was biking there because I didn't want, you know, to bother my mom and dad from driving me. So I grabbed my bike, and I'm heading around the corner. There's that tobacco shop. You know where it is, uh, Mitch, right? Yeah, it's that yeah. orange roofed. Uh, they redid it with stone and everything. Yeah, it's that tobacco <clears throat> shop. It's that corner, and it goes like it curves like this, just a smooth curve. And I'm going around it, and it was rainy. I hit a puddle. My bike slant just goes right out from under me, and I slide ten feet into the middle of the street. If there was a car there, I would be dead. Wow. Well, I actually remember another painful experience I went through. Um, I was at my grandmother's house. We had just uh, rented it because she had a <clears throat> gone to a uh, nursing home. And uh, I remember walking down the steps one day, and uh, usually I wear very long jeans or uh, jogging pants because I like room in my pants and whatnot. That sounded wrong, but whatever. Um, I was I walking. Too many skinny jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I remember catching my jeans on the very first step and tumbling down the stairs. I got up and uh, I was just like sitting there and uh, everyone in the house was asleep at the moment. I hit the ground with such a, like, a loud thump. Everyone got up like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. I walk away and just like fall over. <laughs> I don't know why. I just like fell after that. Well, you were probably shaken. Yeah, I also remember I fell off a four-wheeler once, going like 40 miles per hour. We hit a hump, and I go flying off the four-wheeler. Got run over by the four-wheeler, but it didn't hurt me. <laughs> Just got up and brushed myself off. I'm like, I'm okay. I'm fine. Uh, scariest and this thing is why Southerners yet. believe in God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> scariest thing you've ever seen. Ooh. Uh, God. God, by far. This could be I'll a, ask the same one. This could be a cartoon. This could be aliens. This could be uh, 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 an, an experience you had, like that swing hitting you, Mitch. It, that could be it. Um, Scariest remember. thing you've encountered or done Ghost, or for seen. fuck's sake! All right, so James is locked in on his ghost. Yeah. Um, I think the scariest thing I've possibly ever seen was... Uh, back when I was a kid, I... Uh, I would always, like, be very paranoid. I've always been paranoid my whole life. And uh, basically, I was about 14. There's my little brother. <laughs> I was 14, and what happened was, I think it was social isolation because I went at home school for a while. And uh, I remember one day going to sleep, waking up, and I thought I saw someone, like, at uh, my foot of my bed. I thought it was my mom at first. I got up, and it wasn't my mom. It was nobody there. I remember freaking out so much. I went back and hit my head on the backboard of my freaking bed. <laughs> oh, that was a very terrifying experience. Because I didn't know who it was. It still creeps me out now. Someone I didn't know was standing at the like, end of my bed. It might have been one of my mom's friends. I don't know. <laughs> you might have been like half asleep. You woke up thinking that you saw someone, which you might have done. But you know, when you wake up, your eyes don't focus. Then you went back to sleep, woke up later... <laughs> thought it was the out. same time, freaked out. So it would technically be like, I saw it at the foot of my bed. Just, and then just like three hours later. <laughs> 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 oh, by the way, my little brother, uh, Jane, we're still doing the podcast. Well, are you almost done? We're almost done. What time are you going to be going? I have no idea. 
Sorry, guys. Um, but we have a few <laughs> okay. more topics. We're going to get a strike for nudity. I can see his nipple. Oh, my God. It's a kid. It's a kid. Give, give him some tussles. Oh, we're going to get our channel shut down now for CP. Oh. It's not CP. It's not CP. Anyway. Uh, what is it? Uh, scariest thing I've ever seen. I, I wish I could say it was... Uh, there's this cartel that two of their guys got arrested for uh, the drugs, and the government was going to execute them. There's not going to still be in here. I think it was either for the drugs yeah, or for someone, there. but I'm not sure. Um, they were going to execute them. They had a choice at what they were going to be beheaded with. They said, you're going to get beheaded. You can choose what you get beheaded with. <laughs> and uh, one chose a, a chainsaw, and the other chose a hunting knife. So they find the dullest, rustiest, old hunting knife they can find, and the other found, you know, just a chainsaw laying around. Gets the chainsaw first, and it's over in like five seconds. Yeah, it, five seconds. I've, I've seen a video of that before. Yeah. Anybody else seen that video? Uh, no. no. Alright, I'll send you a link or something after this. But, um... I'd like to say it was that, I topped that recently with the ricochet. <laughs> Seeing that ball of lead fly back at me was quite oh. fun. By the way, Luke, uh, after this topic, we can. I have to do one more, but then I gotta get off. I gotta go. Yeah, we've only got one more. All right, cool. Um, oddest thought. What's the oddest thought you've ever had? Um... Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and take this. Uh, I was looking up a lot about, let's say, I'm trying to remember here, chemistry and stuff. And uh, I was watching the Batman Begins film with the Scarecrow, and the honest thought that came into my head is him who makes that like the Scarecrow makes that fear gas, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want it in my head. I want it so badly to get into chemistry and develop a fear gas and see how that would affect like uh, people. Not like you know randomly throwing at people, but affect me personally. But I wanted to develop that, but uh, of course it's impossible. But well, that's probably the oddest thing I've ever thought. Is it though? Because I'm sure there's a site uh, you could create a drug to the point that someone's so delusional that they they get paranoid and so scared. Yeah, but it wouldn't be exactly like Scarecrow's type of gas, where it like you know makes them like see all dark and like start freaking out like they're on LSD times twenty. Yeah, you know. <laughs> But uh, I'm trying to remember what was it. Uh, more about the whole odd things. It's like, I remember another odd thought. Like, I'm a very paranoid person. Uh, I always have odd thoughts that, uh, you know, someone is watching me. And I always get so paranoid about it. It's crazy. All right, uh, Lewis, what is uh, your kind of odd thought? I, there was a point where I... I like I, I have this thing called chronic migraine disorder, and I, I kind of semi-fixed it, but it was to the point that I couldn't get up out of bed every day. And it got to the point where I just thought, should I try and kill someone? <laughs> <laughs> I got bored. I couldn't be bothered sitting in bed anymore, so I actually started looking up. I, I, I was just like, I know how I could do this. I could order all this stuff. I could hide it. I could bed it. I could do all this stuff. And I was like, ooh, this is exciting. And I realized, wait, I'm mental. And I'm probably <laughs> delusional from the amount of painkillers I'm on. <laughs> What about you, James? Really? I can't think of anything. Just okay. the oddest thought. Like, man, I wonder if I could turn my jeans into a balloon animal or something. <laughs> <laughs> anything. Oh my god, my little brother keeps trying to, like, I'm going to have to turn my camera off. Oh my god. One second. There we go. Yeah, science! science. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about you, Luke? Um... My oddest thought was, hey, I wonder if I could if I could kill this person and get away with it, but I don't want to try. So I had a dream about it and thought, yeah, they're dead. Awesome. I got away with it. <laughs> Yay. And then I found out they were alive, and I was like, Darn. Man, I wish my dreams were like have that. You ever actually had a, have you ever actually had a dream that was so vivid that you thought it was real? Oh, yeah. Um, I had a dream I, that I had died. 
and and it was awesome. Like <laughs> I, I bet you just got up casket. the next. I bet you just got up like the next morning and thought, "Wait, I'm dead. I'm a ghost." And just like took off your pants and then just started strolling through the house naked. Nice. Oh, <laughs> go outside. Goes to church and just like just like just goes. Why is my yes. X-ray vision not working? <laughs> I remember uh, I had a dream like that once. I was uh, my, it was more of a nightmare really. Uh, I was being so mean to my friends. I was making my friend Kenny cry like a little bitch. <laughs> and uh, basically, I the next day it was so vivid. I actually apologized to him, wondering if I had actually done it or not. And he's like, "You're crazy, man. You never said that to me." I'm like, "Oh, well, I'm saying it to you now." <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you really think of me, huh? <laughs> all right. Well. That's all of our topics and uh, all of our guests' time. So, uh, Lewis, what are you doing? Uh, uh, squeezing my lip and singing. Oh, uh, okay. Cool. Magical. So, anyway, uh... See you guys next Friday. Or, well, this this one was Saturday. We just weren't feeling it yesterday. Sorry for being late. But, uh, hopefully next week we'll have a list of topics that I didn't come up with at 3 in the morning. We're late. We we we're late like a teenager's pregnancy. Wait, yes. no, fuck. Period. <laughs> teenager's period. I ruined that joke. <laughs> nice one, Lewis. Nice one. Claps. Claps for you. See you guys next week.